Hi everyone, Code Queen Ayeli again. I'm going to show you in this tutorial how to perform a search from the home page by entering a single item, clicking a button to search, and then displaying the results on a different page while still filtering with that same item that you typed in on the home page. Now, you can have this code on the home page, on a different page, or even on the header. Let's try it again. Type in a name, click the search button, and then your results display on a different page. Let's delete that. And then it displays all of them. This is just a test database. It has test information. I basically chose the letters A through N, which are the first 14 letters of the alphabet. Click this little button so you can see the test data. Random names in alphabetical order and random numbers, not necessarily assigned to each person in the same order. I just basically randomly assigned each one a number. So you can search either by the number or the name. So this is a dual search in one database. If you already have a little bit of experience with code, all you need to do is get on the tutorial site, go to the code page, copy, paste, fix it up the way that you need, and you're done. If this is your first time coding, then please continue to watch the video and I will show you step by step how to add this code and make it work on your site. Let's go to the home page. Use this example, try it out, test it out. Then at the bottom, it'll give you the exact steps. The very first thing you have to do is turn on the developer tools at the top of the menu. Look for the word code, then click turn on developer tools. After you turn on the developer tools, you can go ahead and turn on the properties panel. We'll be using it later. You go to the same menu, look for tools, and then click on properties panel. This will activate it. After you do that, we have to start preparing the actual search bar. You can either use a drop down menu or you can copy my design and use a simple text user input element. On the left side of your editor, click on user input and look for the user input element. After you've added it to your page, go ahead and style and design it any way you like. You can add a shadow line underneath. You can even add an image for the button. Then you need to make sure you either already have a database created and prepared or do that now before you continue. Without the database created, we won't be able to test anything out. So go to the left side open the site structure. Let me show you where that is. See this thing right here? There's a little arrow down at the bottom of the page. If you click on that, it opens up the site structure. This is where you'll find the databases. So click on the word database. If you don't have a database here, you can either click on add collection or click on this little plus sign. After you've added your database, input all the information. If you don't know how to do that, click on this button at the bottom of the image. It'll take you to all of the basic videos to show you how to create a database, how to enter the information, how to sync it, and how to update it. After you've finished with your database, you're going to need to create the page where you will be displaying your results. But before you can send them to that page, you have to create it because we will need this page information inside of the code panel. So this is the page that I created. It has another search bar at the top, just in case they need to search for something else. And then it has a repeater at the bottom. If you don't know how to use or design a repeater, click on this button. It'll take you to my repeater video. After you finish that step, go back wherever you added your search bar and button and start renaming each element. 
You do that by clicking on the element, and if you've already activated your properties panel, then this is what will pop up in this little part where it says ID, you can change the name. The reason you want to change the name is because it'll give you a default name like input 1, input 2, 3, 4, and so on. And that'll be a little bit difficult to identify inside the page code and we won't know what is what. So if we add names like search bar, it'll help us read the code a little bit better because we're following my design. Click on the two buttons still in the properties panel, go to events, and then click on the on click event. There will be a little plus sign here. Click on the plus side and select enter. It'll save the name. Whatever name it gives you is completely fine. It'll add it to the page code automatically. Then we are ready to add the code so that it sets the search bar value. Then it triggers the search code for the repeater that we created and redirects it to that other page. Let's view that code. So we have two pieces of codes and they're going to go on two pages. Going back to the editor, this is my home page. I called it search. At the very bottom of the screen, you'll see two little arrows. You can click on maximize or open. It'll open up the page code. And this is where I got the first code from. The code for the home page is this. It says import local from Wix storage, import Wix location from Wix location, which means we will be using the local storage to store temporary information which is actually being typed into the home page and then transferring it over and pulling it out again so we can display it in the redirected page and that is what is helping us complete the search on the separate page because we're using this function. Now the unready is empty but after that you will have a line that says export function search button on click. Well, search button is the name of my image. I named it search button. Whatever you named yours, this is what will come out here. When this item is clicked, something is going to happen. And the something that's going to happen is we typed in something in the search bar and this value is going to be read by the code and then we're going to call it the word. Well, this word is going to be saved in the local storage so I'm going to name this word the search word. That's just the piece of code that I'm telling the local storage to save it. I'm going to save the search word and it's going to be this word. So I have search word here. You can make up any word that you want. It does not have to be search word. And whatever word you put over here, you have to put it in the end over here because it'll save it for that field. Then after it does that, I want it to redirect me to a second page. My page is called results. How do I get this URL? Well, from inside the editor, let me close the code. Let me go to my results page. I'm going to click on the menus and pages. I'm going to click on the options. I'm going to click on page SEO. I'm going to scroll to the bottom and I'm going to get the URL that's here. So whatever your URL is, you're going to copy the end of it. After that slash, you see that slash that's already in there? Well, you just need this part because in your code, the slash is where you're going to paste everything after that. Now, don't get rid of these little tiny dashes right here. These are very important. As soon as you start deleting that, everything breaks. <laughs> so don't break it. You're done with the home page. Then you're going to move on to your results. This is my results page. This is what it looks like in the editor. I added a repeater. Remember, if you don't know how to work repeaters, watch that video. Well, after I added all of my elements, I added the search bar again and another search button and the repeater to display the results. My repeater's name is hashtag repeater1. So, the bottom of the page, I am also going to add this code, which is right here. 
I'm still going to be using the local storage and now I'm going to be using the Wix data. Well, I am going to have it on ready code because as soon as the page is ready, I'm going to add a variable. This variable is also a made up word and I'm going to call it same word because this same word, um, I'm going to pull it from the storage and, and then I'm going to insert it in my code. So now I'm retrieving the local item that I set in the local storage. I'm looking for the search word. So there's a word that's saved there and it's pulling it, but now I'm going to call it same word. So as soon as the page is ready, the value from my search bar will be the same word. It's going to insert that value. And my placeholder for my search bar will also be the same word. Because if you don't put a placeholder, it'll be blank and the person may not know that something is actually being searched if they don't see anything there. So you may want to add this, but it's completely optional. Then when the data set is ready, I added this line. You're going to write down your hashtag name for the data set. I wanted to perform search. Search is a function. Here's a search function down here. You can name the function whatever you want. Search is the made up word. You can write down hot dog. <laughs> Don't do that though. You can literally name it whatever you want. So there's a function called search and what is happening here is there will be a query inside of my database called name. Get the name of your database. Mine is called name with a capital N and that is why I inserted it here. I'm going to perform a query in my database and it's going to contain a name. A name with a lowercase n is the name of my column or my field, which is actually the field key that you'll find inside of your database. Here, I click on the dot dot dot, manage properties. This is my field key, name with a lowercase n. So I'm going to be searching in this column called name and it's going to be searching for that word or that value that's inside of the search bar right now. Remember, we already pulled it from the storage and we set it to be the word inside of the user input element. So now the same value, we're going to be using it to perform the search in the database. This is going to contain the name, which means it doesn't necessarily have to have the same capital or lowercase letter or the full exact name. It's just going to contain a part of this word or this value. So this is why I have the word contains. If you wanted to equal it exactly, change this dot contains to dot eq. The letter e is in Edward, q is in queen, <laughs> and then that's it. And that'll change the meaning of this line. I have a second line because I wanted to perform a second query. I'm going to do an or, or it's going to search also in the database called name. Now this can be the same database or you can have two different databases. It's up to you. So in my database name, I'm going to look for a number and it's going to search for that exact value that was typed into the search bar, but I want it to equal that number. It's not going to contain it. If I put the word dot contains instead of dot eq, and if I search for the number one, for example, it'll give me anything that has a number one in it. So I will see number one, number 10, number 11, 12, 13, and 14, because they all contain a number one. They don't equal the number one. So I wanted mine to equal. I changed this to dot eq. Then it's gonna find and show the results in repeater one. That's it. That's your entire code. Test it out. Remember that you can also join the Facebook group to ask any questions that you might have. Thank you so much for watching my videos. If you would like to say thank you, simply click thumbs up on the video, share it with your friends, subscribe to my channel. If you would like to leave a review on my Facebook page, please do so. I would greatly appreciate it. I'll see you soon. Bye.